well, hello, and thank you for visiting us with Slice of New Pulse. Uh, world's upside down right now, uh, and hopefully there'll be a, a new normal, but, and hopefully we'll see it soon. But right now there are lots of issues, uh, financial, emotional, uh, people need to find sometimes a way to eat. And we want to talk about that to our neighbors. We're going to start out with the financial aspect. You know, we're really appreciative. We uh, asked for a branch manager and we got a bank president. So Ulster Savings Bank has really been, uh, been kind to us today and, and we have a wealth of information. I think you'll learn a lot. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Hello, sir. Would you please introduce yourself? Sure. I'm uh, Bill Calderaro. I'm the president and CEO of Ulster Savings Bank. And how long have you been president? So I've, I've been with Ulster Savings Bank. Go, it just it will be four years in in coming June. So, so you weren't around when the bank was established. I was not around when the bank was established. Uh, so, a little little bit younger than that. But the yeah. the bank actually this coming Sunday, um, April twelfth, will the bank be the bank's hundred and sixty ninth anniversary. Oh, so so this institution has seen it all. We we've seen quite a bit. Um, we've 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 been through a lot. We've been through three depressions. 26 recessions, I think it was 28 presidential um, you know, election cycles and, and numerous other crises. In fact, we even lived through leisure suits. <laughs> okay. uh, my mother, she's 92, and, and she says she's never seen anything like the world right now under COVID. Uh, How is this affecting your staff and your operations? So, yeah, it, it, it's, you know, this is uh, unprecedented. I think the last time we've had a, a pandemic we were around, and it was you know, 1918. But um, we do have, and we've had a pandemic plan um, in place for for a number of years that we we had created. So we actually triggered that plan back in January, and began ordering the supplies that we thought we would need, and and, um, and the equipment we would need to get through it. Doing some training for our staff and different pieces. So internally, we've 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 dealt with that in order to be able to continue to maintain our services for our clients. Um, for our employee safety, for our you know, community safety or customer safety, we have done things like close our, our lobbies. Um, so we're providing those services through our drive throughs um, We have online banking services and mobile products that you can, you can use 24-7. We've done things to try to help our customers, like raise our debit card limits, um, increase the amount of cash you can get from ATMs in electronic fashion. We've actually done things like waived... Um, all of our ATM fees for customers and non-customers. We've waived overdraft charges and um, we've increased the uh, spend, said spending limits on different pieces. And one of the things we did uniquely was we actually were able to go in and with and through the Fed and anyone who's receiving a paycheck or a social security check or anything like that coming in electronically, we're now releasing those funds as soon as they hit the bank um, and as soon as we can see them. In some cases, that's one or two days earlier than they've ever been able to be released before. Have you had to lay off staff? We have not, and we, have, we do not have any plans for laying off staff. Um, we've done some things to get them, you know, to, to maintain our social distancing. So we have about, at this point, I think 60% of our staff are able to work from home or other remote locations. Um, you know, we have separated offices in different pieces. We've said um, going through all the protocols and all of the, the safety features that we, we get from um, all the agencies, but we will not and have not laid off any staff. Well, I want to talk about some of the programs highlighted on your website. Um, what is the Paycheck Protection Program? So the, the Paycheck Protection Program is uh, was issued through the, the SBA, the Small Business Administration. Um, it's a loan program it, that came out for them. It was literally put together in days. We're participating in it. Um, we actually went live with our applications on Monday evening um, and it's Tuesday morning to be able to take those and process those. And I'm happy to say we, we are processing those and getting approval. I think we have at this point about $20 million in, in applications received already through our customers. What it is is it allows a, a business to apply for a loan um, through the bank, but it's SBA guaranteed to 100%. Um, the majority of that loan, at least 75%, has to be used for payroll-related expenses. So payroll, um, payroll taxes, benefits, to keep um, your employees employed. Okay? And if you do that and qualify and you, and you follow the, the guidelines with it, which really aren't that difficult, um, that loan at the, end of the t at, the, at the end could be forgiven. Um, so it would almost turn into grant funds instead of being a, a loan product. 
Uh, this program, as I recall, was enacted on Friday, and you were up and running on Monday. How unusual is that in the world of banking? <laughs> that's that's uh, we, we, the joke around here is it was a good you know it was a good it was a good month Monday, um, <laughs> <laughs> so that would normally be uh, you know a couple of months to get a process like that. Even first of all, for the SBA to release a new program, get it into a system for us to be able to get documentation together, and to you know to do the testing that we needed to. Um, would normally truly be a you know a several month process. Um, we our staff worked diligently through you know through the night through the weekend um, to be able to you know, and the SBA actually made changes to those pro to that program hours before it was released on uh, you know including changing the application. So we had to reprogram everything we had pre pre planned for, and we did that over the weekend and we were able to. Uh, to have a process in place um, late on Monday and, and into Tuesday, really, we were full, full go with the program. Good thing there was no baseball <laughs> or football to miss on Sunday, because it sounds like you would have missed it. We would have missed it. We, we were a little busy. Uh, what about if a homeowner can't make it their mortgage payment for a month or two? So um, right on our website, and, and you, you, homeowners can go out there um, and look, we have a, a payment relief program already in place. They can get a three-month payment deferral or a 90-day payment deferral. and um, they have to, do have to apply for it. I just want to remind everybody that that is a program you need to apply for. You can go out, just put the information in. It's a very simple application on our website. We were, we're right now we're running um, about three day notice back to everybody as soon as they put it in. So we're, we're notifying them of their approval within three days. The reason we ask for the application and we're just making it automatic is there's certain things we have to do on our side to put that in place. And the way that would work is the homeowner would not have to make payments for at least three months. Um, they don't have to make that payment up. They just start to resume their payments again in 90 days. Their normal regular monthly payment is all they'll need to pay. And um, the, at the end of the loan, right, there'll be a slightly larger larger balance. We're not we're not capitalizing the interest on that loan, meaning you're not going to pay interest on the interest. You'll still only owe the original principal and the original interest that you owe on the loan. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so moving it out to hopefully when the times are a little bit easier. Moving out to end times are a little bit easier, and um, e the reason we're doing it and not extending the maturity date, just because that was a question that some people had, is um, if we extend the maturity date, it truly counts as a modification of the loan. We would have to get updated title insurance. They would have to pay for an update to the title policy. We didn't want to do that, you know, and, and add that extra expense. The majority of loans do not go for the full term. Right? They don't take the entire, entire term of the loan. Most of them will either sell a home or refinance somewhere along the way. So with, the, with that, you would just have a slightly large, you know, slightly higher balance than you would have had had you made those three payments at that payoff period. But it's usually at a point that you're either getting those funds you know, in a new loan or, pay, or selling the home. Um, and we'll deal with it, you know, if it goes full term and anybody has an issue making that, you know, that full payment at the end, we can work with them then and not have to worry about updating a title policy. What about uh, businesses who might have a loan with you and can't make their payments? So we're, we're also offering that, that same type of payment relief to our business clients. Um, you know, if the, uh, the state had come out with some guidance and actually some rules that um, after we had already offered it to our homeowners, uh, say that they wanted it to be off to homeowners, but they, they didn't include businesses. We did. So we, we're offering the same. So there's an application for businesses out on our website as well. Um, a few more questions for businesses than, than the homeowner one, but still a very simple process. You complete that, send it in, and again, we're still running about three days' notice um, on, on all of those as well. Um, I read somewhere about a K-12 learning portal. Uh, can you tell us about that? Sure. So um, we've always had a, a, a large commitment to financial literacy. We think that that's um, been extremely important for both adults and, and children. And we had actually, um, through the the Ulster Savings Bank Foundation sponsored a program where we were providing um, a full financial literacy package to many of our, our local um, schools, and mostly the high schools within um, the markets that we serve. Now that, and we also had on our website 101 different modules that adults could use on financial literacy for educational components, everything from applying for a mortgage to what does credit mean, to what is a credit report, career planning, um, but when the school started to close and, and kids were home, we thought it was also important to provide some home right, content. So we, we, linked, we put a link on our website as well for K-12 
that has interactive um, programs that kids can go out and do to learn about financial literacy that parents can work with the, the children on. We think it's going to be, it's always been important, and I think it's going to be even more criti critically important now that we're going through, uh, what we're going through, that the young people start to understand what it is to have um, good financial sense. Um, with the world upside down, uh, is uh, Ulster Savings Bank making loans right now? We are making loans. <laughs> Believe it or not, we're some, some cases we're making record volumes of loans. So um, we've done a number of things to change them. We have always we've had the capability to take online applications, um, applications by phone. So our our residential lending group has been extremely busy, um, and they are still closing loans. Um, we are so we're taking applications, approving and closing loans. We actually have set up. Um, if you go to our, our Swank Drive office in Kingston, we have drive by closings. So we have a large tent in the back, car actually drives in, or whatever attorney just walks out and, and does the paperwork, you never have to leave your car. Um, we get everything notarized, closed it, and, and, and that's how we're, we're dealing with those. We also have on uh, many occasions the ability to do e-sign for most of the original disclosures and different pieces, so we really can um, still potentially close loans, and we're also doing, um, we're still getting requests for commercial and business loans as well. Um, how about construction projects that might be financed by Elser Savings? Are they ongoing? They are, but they're 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 more limited. So with the um, with the governor's recent changes of who is and who isn't essential in the construction industries, actually some of those have stopped not because of the financing, but because the, the construction crews aren't able to complete the job. Um, we're working with all of our borrowers that are in that middle of the construction. So the, the ones that can and have projects that are still moving, we are continuing to fund. Um, the ones that, that have stalled, what we're going to do, we're working with them to um, either extend loan loans, draw periods, right, or do different things so that they'll be able to complete their project um, as soon as they can get crews back on the, back on the job. Um, what are the similarities between what's happening now out there and, and the the uh, Great Recession of uh, 2008. So it, it it's it's very different. Um, there, there's some similar things that we are looking at from a relief standpoint, but um, realize that the 2008 was really first and foremost a financial crisis, right? So it so it was a, a money supply. It was a liquidity issue. Um, as far as many of the larger banks, you know, they they had uh, problem loans. They were getting calls on those loans that they had sold into the marketplace. So there was a real liquidity crunch. There wasn't, was, and there was um, instability in the financial industry, you know, especially with some of the larger, the larger banks and larger players. That's not the case now, right? The, the, the fact is that we came into this with probably the strongest banking system we've had in years. Um, banks have, are extremely well capitalized and had, had financial strength. Um, and I, so that's that's one of the main differences. It's this isn't, this isn't that was a weakness in the banking system, mostly at the top. This is not a weakness in the banking system. So here it's the the banks are really more the solution um, than being part of the problem. And uh, you know, luckily again as a as a local community bank and as a mutual bank, we weren't part of that problem either. So we were always in sound capital capital standings that had never made any of the. Uh, the subprime loans that caused that original problem. Um, is your bank uh, administering any of the federal programs, uh, the recent uh, CARES Act? Well, the, the, the ones that we are administering, as you mentioned, are, is the SBA, the, the um, Payroll Protection um, Program, which is the PPP, is, is, was initiated through that CARES Act. Um, the, the other programs are uh, that have really come through the care after some of the we are offering to our employees some of the leaves and some of the the um, programs that are available through that as well we believe anybody who has signed is um, signed up or has already put direct deposit for things like tax returns in the past and and different pieces or receiving social security then once those stimulus checks start coming through obviously those will flow through into those accounts and they won't need to do anything as well so um, the balance of most of those CARES Act programs are really government, go government run programs. So the, the true disaster um, um, loan that the SBA has always offered has always come directly through the SBA. You have to go into, the, as a borrower, you go directly into the SBA portal. We do have links on our website for anybody that needs, needs to do that. 
um, but that is administered and made directly through the SBA. Okay. Well, you know, there's only so much a bank can do. Uh, there are people out there who don't have bank accounts, mm -hmm. uh, who, you know, who you can't reach through traditional methods. Uh, are there any uh, uh, humanitarian or social programs that uh, your bank is involved in? Absolutely. So we, we've, we've always been a big supporter uh, of our community through both our volunteer efforts and, and our dollars of donations that we've made every year. Um, again, as a mutual bank, we, ex we exist. We have no shareholders. So we exist and we're created for the benefit of our customers and the community at large, and we take that to heart. That's just part of our DNA. Um, immediately, our, our foundation had a quick meeting, a phone meeting within days, um, and we issued um, some proactive grants within the, into the community for what we thought were essential needs. So things, we've, we funded food shelters and food pantry programs. We were a big participant in, um, uh, in uh, County Executive Ryan's Project Resilience, and we were one of the first to put into funds into that. Um, we've continued, and I've been out several times now and delivered um, checks to food pantries um, and other organizations. And we're continuing to look at that, and we will we will be releasing more funds um, as best we can see where they're where they're you know we're trying to determine what the greatest need and where maybe some of the government programs that are coming out will have gaps. So we we felt that the government was going to come out and fund some of these, but we could get the funds out there much faster. So we put the money out first. Now as that, that's coming in for those programs, we're going to look to some other programs that we can potentially fund and help. In addition to, we're, we're very soon going to be needing to do our regular grant programs anyway, so we're not stopping those. Well, that's what they mean, I suppose, by a community bank. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard not to be impressed by, you said earlier that you had a pandemic plan in place and activated it in January, which is quite impressive, and maybe there's some lessons to be taken from that uh, in other segments of the society, but um, when we get to the other side of this, um, does that pandemic plan also deal with how to help jumpstart the economy and how get us back on our feet? Well, the, the, the pandemic plan that we had, the pandemic plan is actually just a, internally how we would continue to operate and what we would need to, to continue to provide the services for our, our customers um, and the community. But yes, we, I mean, outside of that, we're already starting to talk about what else we can do. We, you know, do, we, do we need to have new loan programs in place? We want to start um, working with our businesses once we are able to get them the, the PPP or anything that they need now to start working on what their business plans are going to be for the future. Right? The, the, the one thing that businesses can do and that, the piece that you can work on um, to get back to the little bit of that normalcy is this is a great time if your business slows to look at your business, right? dust off that old business plan, take a look at it. Right? Is it still viable for today? Do you need to make some changes for that? What do you anticipate um, that some of your customer needs may be in the future for the for the for the businesses? And you know, do you, do you need to make some changes? Um, and would you need some potential findings? Do you need to retool? Do you need to um, re-inventory for a different type of product? Do you need to re think how you deliver your product to the marketplace or market um, your, your product. And this is a great time for businesses to do that and we'll work with them through that and also we want them to be ready um, if they are going to need some financing. It's also the great time to get everything together, right? Work on your records. We talked about it was in a, a call earlier and that was one of the things we said. This is a great time to get your financial house in order as a business so that you can, if you are applying for any of the government programs, the PPP, or the SBA, you will need it at the end um, in order to submit for that forgiveness to keep very, very good records, right? Because they're gonna to wanna to know that those funds were used for their intended purpose. Um, it's also a great time to get the rest of, you know, many, many of our local businesses and many of our small businesses, some of the things that fall behind when you're busy, right, are some of the bookkeeping things or some of the, the record things. This is a great time to get those all in, in place so that when you're ready to come back out, we can, we can act on those applications very quickly and get more funds out into the marketplace if you are going to retool to get your business reopened. Well, uh, I can't thank you enough. It's been fascinating. It's been educational. It's been uh, uh, just uh, really appreciated that you took the time and, uh, and had, had a few words of wisdom for the people of New Pulse. So thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate the, the, the time with you as well. Thanks for watching A Slice of New Pulse. Uh, we've learned quite a bit, and I, I hope it's been helpful to some of our neighbors. You know, uh, it's said that information is the antidote to fear, and we received a lot of information today, a lot of, a lot of uplifting information, a lot of, a lot of indication that the institutions and the banks, at least this bank, 
are really watching, getting our back and really looking out for their customers. I'm sure that's true all around America. And, you know, at times like this, we see the best of human nature. We see the worst of human nature. Some of the best of it's happening right here at Elster Savings Bank. So thanks for watching.